it's very capable and it's it, it, you know it's very uh, it's very familiar in a lot of ways to a lot of the AI chatbots that are out there. Um, there are, the significance of it, it, it is twofold, and this is why there's been a huge sell-off in American tech stocks, is it was obviously done very cheaply. Now we talk a lot about TikTok, don't we? But what about this new, this new app, a new AI app, which seems to be taking the market by storm in America? Is this going to be a new headache for Donald Trump? Why do I say that? Well, just a week ago, Donald Trump spoke about raising anything up to $500 billion by way of investment in American AI. Now, there's a Chinese startup that's uh, been unveiled. It's cheaper, it's more sustainable, it's more powerful than anything in the West, and it's free. Mark Selman is the tech correspondent for The Times, and he's here. Hello, Mark. Hello. Hi. What an extraordinary story, this, Mark. Do tell us more. Yeah, so this is a Chinese startup. Um, it's actually been around uh, for a little while, um, but it was spun out of a hedge fund. Um, and what it's done is created a AI uh, model uh, and a chatbot out of it, a little bit like ChatGPT, uh, but they've done it at a fraction of the cost uh, and extremely quickly. Uh, and it seems to rival OpenAI's most powerful reasoning model. This is called O1 and it's the one that you use if you want a deeper response, more mathematical uh, and more reasoned responses. So, Mark, it's it's cheaper and it's better. Where did it come from? Was this being cooked up in a in an AI lab somewhere, unbeknownst to anyone? And where was that in in China, in some some corner of Silicon Valley? Where was it going on? It's going on in China, and it, this is a a startup that came out of a hedge fund, essentially as a as a research hub. Uh, but it has become extremely uh, effective company. It's not come out of nowhere. People in the AI industry have been keeping an eye out for it for about six months because right. they, they've, they've been releasing their research. It's not a secret what they've been doing. In fact, it's completely the opposite. It's, the irony of this is that you know, a lot of uh, American AI companies are very secretive about their work and don't release it. Yeah. Uh, this Chinese company has both released it in its entirety to the world, completely free of charge for anyone to develop and use it, uh, but has also created a, a paper um, and, on how it did it. So, so if, the, if the, the American rivals, Mark, if they saw this coming, why were they, as it were, just blown aside as it emerges in the market? I don't think they necessarily saw it coming because until it was released, they didn't know how capable it was. Yeah. But obviously, they know what what uh, Deep uh, Deep Seeker has been doing. It's just a matter of you know keeping up with your rivals. When you're on a certain track, it's very hard when you're developing things in your own way to change tack. And essentially, you know what Deep Seeker has done is like all AI research hubs, they build on the uh, on the, the sum of knowledge that's out there. Uh, and I'm sure that others will now build on what DeepSeek has done to move the uh, to, to move the technology forward. Have you, have you uh, had but, a go, Mark, at DeepSeek yourself? Is, does is it just way ahead of the competition? It's very capable, and it's it, it, you know it's very uh, it's very familiar in a lot of ways to a lot of the AI chatbots that are out there. Um, the the significance of it, it, it is twofold, and this is why. There's been a huge sell-off in American tech stocks. Is it was obviously done very cheaply, uh, but it was also done with hardware that appeared to be at a at a, a complete fraction of the level being used by American AI companies. Mm. And at the moment, there are export controls from America to China of the highest end chips. Well, this company didn't even use those, it said. It used a, uh, just 2,000 of an older uh, um, uh, technology chip uh, and seemed to have produced a, the most capable model out there. So I think that has frightened those who have invested uh, in the American companies who have committed tens, if not hundreds of billions to, to build out this AI infrastructure for the development of AI in the future. Right, so the, those who put a lot of money into uh, the rival to this uh, to this app, they're going to be spooked. But what about the question of security? Because you know, it's now a familiar concern, isn't it, that uh, an app like this 
coming out of China could do all sorts of things which are not helpful or desirable to us in the West, spying on us and so on. Yes, yeah, so as part of its privacy policy, uh, when you sign up to uh, DeepSeek, you also sign up to it collecting your keystrokes, which is how you type on the keyboard. That's actually a familiar um, privacy policy. Uh, TikTok does exactly the same. And this will fuel fears that, you know, that, that Chinese companies are collecting uh, data on uh, Western users uh, that could be harvested by the state if they wish so wish. So that will continue uh, as a theme running in the background to this. Um, so expect more of that. Right. Now, what about, well, there's a, there's a clip, isn't, isn't there, which has gone viral. You've got a user asking this app about the Tiananmen Square protest, which, of course, was when protesters took to the street in Beijing in 1989 and the authorities crushed that protest. And when the app is asked about that, that it, it just has no answer. Are we looking at censorship here? Yeah, there's nothing covert about this. If you uh, want to develop a large language model in, in China, you have to uh, uh, abide by the rules of the Chinese state, which say you cannot mention uh, Tiananmen Square, you can't mention Taiwan in certain contexts, uh, and you have to abide by all the, its rules. So this is not a surprise that you're not able to question the chatbot about Chinese um, uh, sensitive Chinese topics. Um, so, you know, those who use it should be aware of that. Uh, and I think as more people use it, they'll find uh, more issues with it that may not be compatible yeah. with Western users. You have to wonder what President Trump is going to do about this. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to ban TikTok now. He just wants you know, an American company to have more than half of it. Now, here's another one. He must be concerned about this. Maybe we don't know, but where does this one go as far as the White House is concerned? Well, the biggest question will be, will it continue to limit the export of high-end chips to China? Mm. Because some have questioned that, that this very policy forced the Chinese to actually innovate when it came to their algorithms, because they didn't have the high-end chips, allegedly. Uh, and so they thought, well, we're going to have to make our advancements in other areas of AI. And there are two other areas. And one of them is data, but the other one is algorithms and, and the talent that create it. And that seems to be what has happened. Now, those that oppose those export orders are now given ammunition for their arguments, saying this has just created innovation in other ways. God, this is such a fascinating story, Mark. Thanks for joining us and telling us all about that. That's Mark Selman, the tech correspondent for The Times.